All right, I made a disaster on my workstation. <laughs> anyway, rate, I've got some mango left over, wild jasmine, white. Unfortunately, it's got a little pink in there. And so I thought I'd throw in some of the um, Too Faced Red Queen, which has got some red and uh, gold tones to it. And then, of course, some gold. And we're going to work with another trick here. All right. Howdy, howdy, this is Clara Lawrence. And I just got through working on a project that was, I'm just gonna flip that over and let it drip for a little bit. <laughs> I should have had that going all along. Um, yeah, I just got through doing a video where I did an inspired by pour and then did a second one and the second one didn't turn out and it's got me a little flustered because I'm trying to fix the problem but also still keep its kind of feel to it a little bit so I just don't it's one of those things where you, you waiting for cells to develop and by leaving it alone it's like what's it gonna do what's it gonna do so it's bugging me a little bit it's in the back of my head going I want splash it any rate <laughs> so in the meantime I've got a little bit more resin to use up and we are gonna do just that. So this time I'm gonna use uh, clear for my base and we're gonna do colors that will highlight the wood a little bit. In other words, or they'll play on top of the wood. And I like how mango and wild jasmine play together. They look really, really good. And then I add some gold because I think gold will definitely make it sing just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna have to use my left hand because my right hand's a little on the messy side here. I do try to keep my heat gun somewhat clean. Somewhat. the challenge of everybody who messes with resin is their heat gun however I am happy to say that this is still the same heat gun I've been using for a couple years so I think I'm doing something right so I'm getting this close to the edge and it might touch a little bit and then I'm going to turn it and make sure it makes full contact and then the resin I'm using just to fill you in real quick because everybody asked me for that. Uh, and it's a Stone Coat Countertops product, uh, Art Coat Resin. And it's a very high quality resin. I'm most proud of, I'm most pleased with it. Most proud of it. Why am I saying most proud? I think my brain again is somewhere else. I think I might just move this closer to the edge. Okay. So. Actually, what I'm going to do is drip some of this into my wild jasmine cup and see if I can mix that in and get a little bit more out of that. Since I got to change off my gloves anyway, and I don't have any. See, all I'm doing literally is scraping it off on the edge here. It tickles a little bit. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much extra resin you get. Clean glove. Now when I do canvases, I'm not usually this clean, but when I'm working on the trays, I do because this, I'm also touching the outside of it and I don't want the outsides to get messed up. And they do, you can clean them off. But it's surprising how much the resin can get away from you as far as getting everywhere. If you don't believe me, look at the closet for anybody who works with resin. Most likely their clothes have some form of resin on them. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for now and catch you back up because this is a slow process. All right, just pulling in at the very end of it. So basically you can see this here, I'm kind of running a bead all the way around the rim just to, so I can have a good seal for a tray. I always think of, you know, when you got to clean it up and such. So I make sure that it is done all the way around. Okay, that's done. In the beginning, it works a lot faster when you just pour, you know, mix up the resin. But further along in the uh, open time, it'll get a little thicker and a little thicker and a little thicker. And you have to <laughs> coax it to like, please move. Okay, let's see. So I've got some white, which is a very pale pink right now. I'm gonna run some skinny lines everywhere. Come on, skinny lines. Not running skinny lines. There we go. Oh. Stop behaving. Come on, behave. Okay. It says no. Okay. And we've got mango. So I like having skinny lines is when I'm using the brush and moving it around. I usually will go in in the layers and cut in the layers and kind of look like ribbons a little bit. All right. Now we've got the uh, wild jasmine. Oop, I gotta mix this in. I had, remember I had that clear in there, so I gotta mix it in. So I probably got another maybe 10%. From just getting it off the gloves. I want this more wild jasmine than I do orange. So hopefully not much more, but squiggle lines. Okay. Alright, and this is my chameleon color, and it will shift depending on the angle. Got some dribble there. And then a tiny bit of gold. You can tell how long it's been since I can almost run a complete thin line. You can see the uh, color passions kind of already reacting here. And there's a little bit going on here and right in there. I'll work with some of my skinny lines. Two 
a couple spots here that's gonna I'll do it right there. I have a kind of a dominant color area. I'll blend those in real quick. Do a whole lot, just darn it. The hard part is like lifting that brush up. Is I think I'm gonna do, nope. Bye. So I'm always trying to go in the direction of the flow of the colors that I poured. I'm trying to get rid of those little dribbles. There we go. And even if it blends in, that's fine. Just as long as it blends in in a way that makes sense. We can get a couple that go around here. I got just a little bit on my brush that I could deposit it when I walk it, when I drag it through. Leave that. Yes. Oh, yeah, I think that's good. Let me bring you in for a close-up. It's very delicate. That's probably been my most feminine piece I've done yet. All right. So overhead. Let me zoom in. I should give you the warning before I actually push the button. So sorry for all those that I have missed. But that area there, mm -hmm. that's going to look pretty. And that chameleon will almost kind of give a bronzy kind of look. Let's see if I can angle this up. And see, so you can see it's speckling right there. It's got a nice sparkle to it. This is going to turn out nice. Okay, redemption. tricky working with a brush like you saw me do every time you pick it up to move it you get, you have quite a bit that adheres to the brush but I sure like what happens when I use it I'll have to figure that out all right I will see you back in a couple hours and we'll get to see how this develops later all right, it's been a couple hours, and this guy has changed an awful lot. Let me zoom in. A lot of stuff has developed. A lot of delicate stuff, too.
very cool. Almost looks like hosiery kind of things. Very sheer fabric going through that. Oh, that's neat. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video. Later, y'all.